Well, hello, Dr. Rowe. It's so great to, to welcome you today and um, to share your thoughts and your insight during our conversation on post-exertional malaise and pacing. Of course, we're going to get into uh, t discussing post-exertional malaise in children um, and, and, and the benefits of pacing. So the first question I have, Dr. Rowe, is how would you define, in your own words, post-exertional malaise and what constitutes this exertion for a pediatric patient? Well, most of them would um, describe it as being an unwell fatigue. It's not mm -hmm. that they're tired. It's very different mm -hmm. from being mm -hmm. tired or fatigued, and they will mm -hmm. differentiate it very clearly. Um, mm -hmm. And it occurs after any activity, and they would say, "Some, you know, if I walk a lot, I just can't think, and if I've been thinking a lot, I just have trouble doing physical activity, which doesn't seem to make sense to most people. But if you think of it in terms of energy expended, they will say, well, I spend more energy thinking than I would if I was just walking. And then they would say, if I was really distressed, I use up a lot more energy if I'm really distressed than if I'm thinking mm -hmm. than if I'm walking. Mm -hmm. So it does yep. depend on how they spend their energy. But the thing that they say is it takes me a lot longer to recover than I normally would. So that um, if they've done something, it can take anything from maybe a day to sometimes a week or two to recover. And I think if you... Um, think in terms of energy and replenishing energy. It's why there's been quite a lot of research going into mitochondrial function, which is really the little mm. energy storehouse in the cells. And mm -hmm. they're finding that they're not um, functioning as well as they would normally. And so therefore, um, young people find that they're not able to do as much as they can or they they say I could run to save my life but I couldn't do it twice mm. Mm, mm, mm. you know mm -hmm. so that they can actually have a burst of energy but they couldn't do it straight away again yeah and mm -hmm. they do take quite a while to get over it and that then depends on what what they're doing what activity mm -hmm. they're having um, whereabouts they are in their illness as well, because it's often mm -hmm. a lot worse early on in the illness than it is later yeah. on. Mm -hmm. um, it can um, just depend on um, how long it is since they last had activity, so, mm -hmm. you know, whether they've really recovered enough. Um, so there's a lot of things that actually they need to jig and it takes quite a while before people actually work out the best way of managing it and understand what they're doing. It also depends a little bit on personality. Um, mm -hmm. It does, <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, especially <laughs> people have been... Especially with children, especially with children. <laughs> people have been sports people. Um, mm -hmm. They're used to a bit of no pain, no gain. And yeah. so they're used to pushing themselves right to the limit. Mm -hmm. And they will often get very frustrated because they do something and then they really hit a wall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah. so they have a very sort of sore tooth recovery um, and quite get quite frustrated, often quite depressed. And it mm -hmm. can be that because they've been an athlete, their endorphins have been replenished or stimulated just with their activity and if they're not doing it they can often feel quite flat so it's, um, it's one of the um, got quite a low threshold for using antidepressants in that group for a short time mm -hmm. because they can often be very helpful in just helping them get through yeah it's very difficult for them to be a bit more measured in how they do it um, mm -hmm. There are other personalities that can cope very well with planning, organising their life, monitoring themselves, and they've mm -hmm. got a much steadier um, 
steadier progress usually. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's, and and, I'm sorry, go ahead. Mm. Oh, I'm just saying that, that not only is it that feeling unwell, but they have a lot of symptoms with it as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the easiest ways that I've found to explain it to parents is that most of them have had flu or some really nasty illness and Mm -hmm. they understand that when they get the flu, they can have a headache, they have aches and pains, they can feel pretty awful, they can feel dizzy, they can feel nauseated. They just can't be bothered. They just need to go and lie down. And Mm -hmm. when you explain that, that all of those symptoms apart from the respiratory ones are probably our body's reaction to the virus rather than the virus causing it itself. And that as we get antibodies, get rid of the virus, our body tends to turn off those Mm -hmm. um, presumably cytokines that are doing that. Um, Yeah. And you start to feel well again. Most of us then forget how terrible we felt when we had it. But if mm-hmm. in any CFS, it seems as if it's not being switched off, that feedback loop mm-hmm. isn't working and people still feel as if they've got the flu without the respiratory component. They just feel that awful, I can't think straight, I need to go and lie down, I feel dizzy, leave me alone, mm-hmm. um, I don't have the energy, I'm achy, I've got headaches. Um, I just don't feel well. So it's that component. And then often when you explain that to parents, they go, oh, okay, I can, I get that now. Mm -hmm. Um, That's Mm -hmm. what it's about. So um, that can often be a helpful explanation for people when they just say, oh, you know, we all know what fatigue is. We know what you've got to do to, to, you know, get better. You've got to get better sleep. You've got to get this. You've got to do that. Um, Mm. It's not like that at all. After you tell the parents, um, what what do you tell a child, a child with all of this energy, with all this curiosity, uh, uh, like we talked about being transparent? How do you explain to a child what can happen if they continue to exert themselves as it relates to post-exertional mm-hmm. malaise? Probably before I would go there, I Mm -hmm. would um, usually ask them what, what are their aspirations? Um, Mm. What are they, Mm. what, if they were well, what would they like to do? You know, what do they want to do as an adult? Also, what sort of things do they enjoy? Mm -hmm. What are their hobbies? What are their, um, And find out a little bit about their social network and social connectedness as well. So if if I find out that, you know, they really wanted to go on to university and they just say, but that's not going to be possible now because I just can't do it. Mm. The next thing is to say, well, okay, let's work out how we can sort that out. Because mm-hmm. what we want to do is to prevent problems from being unwell. And so rather than saying we want to give you a plan to how to manage your life, we just say, well, there are problems if you're unwell. Um, you can lose your social contacts with your friends. And they'd say, yes, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> happens. You know, if I'm not seeing them and I don't feel I can keep up with them and they wear me out and so I want to not do that. So there's social contact, something to keep their brain ticking over or to keep them engaged with school. Find out about what what they're capable of doing with physical activity and sometimes it's only having a shower or maybe yeah. just getting up and organising themselves for the day. Sometimes it's just walking to the front gate. Other times it's, um, you know, they're able to do a little bit of sport, but they're not, allow- not able to um, finish a match or they can't keep up. And sport is a huge part of their life. It's their reason for living and it's mm-hmm. their social connection and 
you know, but they just can't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. And then um, asking them what's enjoyable. And for them, that's usually huge surprise because they say well if I can't go to school how can I do something enjoyable people will find out um, and they'll wonder why on earth I'm not doing other things and so I then say look if we don't do those things you can get really anxious socially if you don't get through schooling and we can't get you doing what you enjoy it's likely that you end up with a lower paid job that's more physically demanding it's more difficult for you to look after yourself so I said we all we want to do is to try and work out how you can spend your energy over the week and then Mm -hmm. you're not allowed to leave any of those things out they don't have to be all even but you have to include them so you have to have a bit of physical activity mm-hmm. something to keep your brain ticking over some social contact and something enjoyable and you need to work out what's important and then discuss it with your parents and then we'll sort out with school mm-hmm. um, getting them to sort that out I've had kids who've been eight years old and in grade two who've been able to sit down and plan that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So everyone comes up with a different plan and with a different yeah. balance and it fits in with what's going on in the family and how the, um, you know, what commitments people have and Um, what times they're able to do it and whether they can be driven to school or whether they go on the bus or whether they Mm -hmm. um, go for one session or not. But then we go through what to do with school in a bit more detail um, and work out how much they're getting there at the moment or whether they're getting there at all. Mm -hmm. And then we'd say, now, what teacher do you like? What subjects do you like? And what mm-hmm. do you need mm-hmm. to get where you want to go? Because if That's you've right. got a teacher that you like and you think is good, mm-hmm. usually their criteria, if I ask anybody from beginning of school through to university to even patients who see a doctor, because we have to do quite a bit of teaching mm-hmm. really. Um, right. <laughs> what's, what's a good teacher? The first thing they'll say in variations in a way they say it, but it essentially means they like me or they're interested in me, they care Mm -hmm. about me. That's right. The second thing is they know their stuff, they know what they're talking about. And the Mm -hmm. third thing is they're interested in whether I'm learning. So they check to see whether I've actually got it or not and if I haven't, they'll work out a way so that I do actually understand it. So... If they can say the teacher who teaches me English is a really good teacher, then you go for the English class because you know that it's worth Mm -hmm. their while going. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not worth their while going if their teacher doesn't care about them, they don't know their stuff and they're not interested in whether the child's learning. And if you're only going for a few hours a week, why would you go? You know, it sounds awful, Mm -hmm. but why would you go? That's right. So there's some key subjects that they need to do to get where they want to go. And sometimes it's at school, sometimes it's by distance ed. Um, And we just sort of work out how to get around it. Rather than going for a set time, they go for the subjects and for the teacher um, if they can get to school. And that way... And that seems like a a motivating point too, I think. And I think... Mm -hmm. You know, kids are more malleable um, when it comes to, uh, I would say, being motivated to understand the effects of of, of overexertion. Mm. Well, if would we um, if we had to go to work and we didn't know what we were meant to be doing and we'd missed half the stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm you pretty soon really wouldn't want to go and we're making kids go to school. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. And so we need to work out 
how they can make the most of the time that they're there. And very often they, they're they very good at working out how much they can do and mm-hmm. when they can get there and when it's appropriate. And for the teachers to not have to try and um, do catch up on subjects where they're not they're not attending um, Mm -hmm. makes a huge difference and if they're expected to be in a particular class then that works much better than if um, they maybe go to one English class a week and they've got to play catch up with the rest of it teachers Mm -hmm. never keep up with them and if they ask their peers they'd say oh no we didn't do much um, right. Mm-hmm. And yep. oh, but yeah, we do have an exam tomorrow. Um, do you know what it's about? <laughs> oh, no. Well, you know, maybe. Um, right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yes. How stressful is that? Do you know, if you yeah. ever want to set someone up for failure, you set up a, a means of them just not being able to cope at school. So we need to work yeah. out ways That's of true. actually making it easy for them to keep engaged socially, um, yeah. be able to keep up probably with their peers. I love the responsibility that you give to, that you gave to the young people to say, here are the, here are the social motivators. Here are the educational motivators. Here are, even if, if it's possible, here are some of the physical motivators. Mm-hmm. 